first of all, thank you for inviting me. It's uh, an honor um, and a pleasure, actually, to participate in such initiatives. So, very happy. Um, so, officially, I'm I'm a researcher at CREAF, which is a res uh, research lab in in, in Barcelona. Uh, and also, I'm uh, an ecology lecturer at the Autonomous University of Barcelona. Um, in the case of this uh, of this talk, may, it may be relevant that I've, I'm the coordinator of the Network for European Mountain Research, and and I've been involved in in, in mountain networks for for some years. I've been uh, part of the scientific committee of the um, uh, uh, Pyrenean Observatory of Climate Change for many years, actually, and I'm also a member of uh, Euromontana. I'm an ecologist, basically, so, so my expertise is in, um, let's say, mountain ecology. And yes, I've been involved in research in the mountain environment for the last maybe um, more than 10 years. I've been running proje projects, but I start, but let's say that I, my, my background as a researcher is not in mountains nor in, uh, let's say, uh, animal ecology. I started doing my PhD in plant ecology. I worked with fine roots, then I became a kind of expert of dendrochronology. And now I've moved, well, and now, 10 years ago, I moved to, uh, to uh, let's say, mountain ecology in a more, uh, let's say, holistic um, view, approach, trying to take into account not only uh, the animals and the plants, but also um, the human impacts on this community and yeah so so i've been involved in i've worked with uh um, invasive well intro, introduced species like uh marmots and trying to see which was the effect of this introduction or reintroduction because they were here ten thousand years ago um on the community and we worked on the different interactions that marmots had in the community we also studied uh plans and since 2016 I'm running a project a very complete project which is uh, funded by the Earthwatch Institute in which we we which takes place in the Pyrenees actually and where we study not the whole community because because it's impossible but we go from soil um, the soil community to large mammals we also uh, work with uh, tree growth seedlings um, small mammals, birds. So we, we, we do a little bit of everything and, and, and in the frame of a, of a, in a place where human impact is quite big because it's in Andorra. So it's a very touristic area and, and, and tourism is very seasonal. So we can, we can try, we can try, we try to understand how, how all these things um, connect to each other. This in terms of research actually. I think these kind of networks are important um, basically in, in two ways. One of them is because uh, since science now is very global, it helps us connect to each other. And that's, that's for us, is very important. So every time we have to find experts of a given uh, field, we don't need to start looking around. We have these networks. And, and this helps a lot uh, finding synergies among us and, and, and make science better, uh, theoretically. Um, so this on one hand. But on the other hand, I think that the way science is built now, where um, you have to find, you have to put your, your field in the map, let's say, um, these networks um, act as a kind of lobby or just, just um, um, facilitate the presence of a given uh, field, let's say mountains, in 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 the world where decisions are taken, right? It can be uh, European, for example, Nimor has an European view, so uh, Nimor wants to put the mountains uh, in the agenda of European research, but and the, the Pyrenean Observatory of Climate Change that I mentioned earlier wants to put the Pyrenees in the agenda of transnational um, uh, because in this case, the Pyrenees are transnational, of course, but in transnational uh, research agendas. Um, also, it can have an effect at the, uh, let's say, in, in our case, at an autonomic level, a sub subnational level, etc. cetera. So, um, so I think that they are really important because otherwise nobody would know that we exist. And, and this is because of the way science is built now, right? I mean, you have to um, 
show and continuously demonstrate that your thing is important. Uh, it's not, let's say, it's not enough that you believe that it's important, because of course we all do, but we also have to show because um, there's, there's many interesting things in the world, of course. So we have to put our thing in the map of, of, the, of the global research agenda. I think that um, here we have to to address uh, the framework of the of that that the Millennium Ecosystem uh, uh, assessment did. Like uh, we have to talk about when we when we talk about uh, why are mountains or whatever important for for the society. Here we have to talk about ecosystem services, which basically is the way we as a society use. Uh, whatever topic. And in the case of mountains, I think they have a, a very special characteristic is that if you if you do a list of, let's say, most or all the, or most of the ecosystem services, mountains uh, are related very importantly or not that importantly related to all of them, actually. And and just to mention, I mean, if you remember, if you have this, this framework in, in mind, there's uh, provisioning services, the regulating services, and the cultural services. And if you think on provisioning services, we take wood from uh, mountains. Uh, most of the clean energy is uh, originated in mountains. Um, we have pastures for, for, for herbivores, for the agriculture. Uh, it's where water is stored. It's Mountains are biodiversity hotspots. All these are services from from the mountains then in in the in the section let's say of regulating services we have water filtration climate regulation regulation of uh, erosion landslides etc and and finally but not least important is there's this cultural services and and when you think on mountains uh it's, it's places to escape from cities is where you find the peace or there's people that go there for bird watching or uh, uh you know um having fun, spiritual uh, uh, things, cultural, and, and, and mountains have, to a greater minor, minor extent, all of these services. They offer all this to, to us as a society. And, and, and I think that's, that's maybe it's not the only ecosystem that, or region that, that has that much to offer, but, but, but there's not many like this, I think. In Nimor, we have this very clear in our minds. We think we, we, of course, we are focused on mountains, but paying special attention uh, on the links between the mountains and the lowlands. Uh, now, I, th I think that uh, the, dependent, the dependence between, let's say, these two groups is too much uh, unilater unilateral. Let's say mountains depend too much um on the lowlands and and we should balance this a little bit uh but yeah of course i mean it's absolutely linked i mean and people that live in the cities that never go to mountains probably do not realize that that many things that they are doing using or eating like high quality cheese or whatever comes from the mountains this is important and of course this is in line of what we just uh we're talking about of course i mean mountains are different from coasts deserts etc right and and mountains are normally assumed to be similar to rural areas but uh but they are not i mean of course there's some some overlap but there's things that differentiate uh, mountain regions from rural regions and just to make a short list probably we have well there's probably big cities in in mountain areas think on switzerland for example uh, you have big cities in, in mountain areas, and this creates a lot of, um, uh, of these connections that were mentioned. Um, then, of course, it's where water is stored and most of the runoff comes from mountains, which doesn't happen necessarily in rural areas. Um, it's where most of the natural hazards occur or originate. You think on landslide or floodings, they, or snow avalanche, they either happen in mountains or have the origin in mountains. Um, of course, I mentioned earlier that they are biodiversity hotspots. If you if you think about the Natura, if you, if you look at the Natura 2000 sites, many, many, many of them are in mountains. 
And we know that uh, globally, for example, mountains uh, host uh, around, I don't know the numbers exactly, but around 80 or more than 80% of the uh, amphibians, mammals, and birds of the world. And, um, and, and, and also, uh, what differentiates mountains from, from other areas like uh, rural areas is that uh, it's the potential for clean energy. I mean, hydropower uh, energy, uh, wind energy, um, it has a huge potential in mountain in mountain areas. Um, and, and finally, well, I also said it earlier, but I think it's important. I mean, for me, mountains are or can be, because if you go to a ski resort, it's not the case, but uh, mountains can be places of peace. It's where you 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 find yourself like maybe maybe in in like the coast or the beach if it's not crowded, right? I mean, you you think you belong to something. But also, you you know that you are not that. I mean, that this is huge, and you are nothing in this world, right? I mean, just a small part uh, in a in a huge world that's probably more powerful than you, and um, and probably that's why there are so many sacred mountains, for example, or many uh, temples are in mountains or whatever, because it's places that have something, whatever you call it. But uh, but where you are alone in the middle of huge valleys, there's something that you feel there that you don't feel anywhere else. I'm not an expert of, on of human health, eh? so so maybe what I say is trivial or maybe it's nonsense or whatever, but I, 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 see, um, I see two main benefits or, or things that connect health with, uh, with mountains. The first, the first thing is that, that comes to my mind is that um, there's a need to develop uh, new strategies for the people that live in the mountains in terms of health, and this is a, probably this is an opportunity for e-health technologies or whatever, because this is a this is a, a, a handicap for for the people that live in in remote areas, mountains included, not only mountains but mountains included, right? Or and um, and we know that that access to uh, health services in mountains is more difficult than than in other places because of uh, communications are, uh, are, sh are uh, slower because of the topography of mountains and there's not that many hospitals in mountain areas unless they are in ski resorts or whatever right so this this is the i mean in terms of research i would say um this is a uh, uh, I don't know if it's urgent or not, but it's it's a uh, it's a uh, need and an opportunity uh, for the people that work in health, and this for the locals, of course, also for the tourists. But this is something that the locals need, and if we want if we want the locals to stay in the mountains, they need uh, an easy access to to the services that we think that they are uh, important. And health, like education. Uh, are important services that everybody should have access to, um, and this, this is this is some homework for the research community. I think uh, just make access to health uh, services easier for locals, and then let's say for more theoretical and for the humanity, I would say that uh, well, one of the ecosystem services that maybe I didn't mention is the, the potential for uh, medicinal medical. Uh, 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 users of many plants that probably uh, we don't know yet that they are there, right? Not not here, not in the Pyrenees, maybe, but but in tropical mountains or in other mountains of the world. And we know that there's there's lots of uh, plants that uh, can offer us solutions for some health uh, issues. And if we lose them, uh, we probably lose a, an opportunity. Um, and then, well, this is related to uh, probably that's why you asked me this because I mean, this is places where where we feel good, and and this is also part of health, and and I think important mountains are also important for this. I like uh, I like the European Green Deal a lot, actually, and also well, we just linked somehow maybe in other words to the to the Sustainable Development Goals uh, of the United Nations. Um, and of course, these, these are working frameworks that then um, we have to use and governments um, need to implement. And, uh, and I hope 
that uh, that uh, national uh, governments or European, well, European for sure, probably, but then national governments will take our results uh, seriously, um, uh, whichever they are. Uh, but but uh, so the framework is there uh, for the mountain community. This is an opportunity. We can address many of the the the, the sections or the topics addressed in in both in the European Green Deal and the SDGs, and. And I hope this is not to be, we call it a uh, whole wet paper or, or whatever, I don't know, uh, useless. I mean, uh, I think the scientific community likes this. I personally like the framework. Uh, probably there's going to be lots of uh, calls that will have to be uh, framed in, in this, in the European Green Deal. And, and I'm sure that the, the scientific community and, and the mountain research community will, will, will take it because um, because um, it provides us with a, a working framework that theoretically should should be useful for the society uh, but in the middle there's the implementation and here it escapes a little bit out of our hands our control I mean we need we need the governments to really commit to this and not only just put themselves a, a label or whatever Look that mountains are vulnerable, but what we have seen in this pandemic is that people left the city to go to the mountains. And uh, which is kind of contradictory, right? I mean, you're in the middle of a pandemic, you want to be close to the health services and you go to places where health services are not that uh, easy to reach. You go to, I mean, in, in, a, in a moment of, uh, let's say, uh, health emergency, um, maybe this is related to, to these feelings that I was mentioning before, right? You go to places where you think you will be healthier or you have a, your well-being will be fulfilled or whatever. And, and we saw that this, uh, it happened in our country and it happened in other, in other countries of, of Europe. We know that people left the cities and went to the mountains or the beach or whatever, right? Far from the uh, urban uh, nuclear and, and, and places where they are better. So we know that, that climate change, climate change will have a well, is already having a, a higher impact than in the surrounding surrounding areas, right? And uh, and of course, this will have impact on all and for humans, for for the societies, will have impacts on all all the ecosystem services that we were mentioning before, in all of them. Uh, for some of it, it's not going to be huge, but for others, it's going to be very important. Um, can be uh, just the increase of temperature, even if the precipitation does not decrease. That in, that means an increase of evapotranspiration, which means less water, uh, which means less snow. Well, less water available, not, not only for plants and animals, but also for humans, maybe someday, um, which will require uh new management strategies for example for water resources uh water will be stocked in the mountains but the people that will need are in the cities or most of the people what do how do we manage it uh also for biodiversity water is important of course then we have um uh tourism ski tourism they will have to reinvent themselves of course if there's no snow um or less snow uh but also we see that that plants are some some plants are really vulnerable to 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 the change in temperatures. For example, uh, snowbed plants they are in high risk of extinction. Uh, at let's say at the mid term, uh, and 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 I think that so the impact will be uh, a little bit everywhere and all the ecosystem services. Of course, uh, we see that uh, also we we see that there's. We have forest fires in mountains, which is something that did not exist 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And now we, so there's forest fire risk maps in all the mountains of the world, because it's, it's something new. And actually due to the slope, much more dangerous than in flatlands in terms of spreading. Um, we won't have glaciers. Uh, all the species that are linked to glaciers will have a bad time, let's say. And we see that there's lots of, uh, uh, so uh, forests are getting denser and moving a little bit upwards and 
we see that this this is this is not only due to climate change this is due to the the, the abandonment of traditional practices like high elevation uh, grazing or the loss of farms but the fact that temperatures are a bit better or higher for this better for these species they move upwards and they grow better and so this creates more dense forests uh, which in the case of fire is is more dangerous but also this is a refuge for a uh, refuge for uh, large mammals uh, large herbivores and also large carnivores they uh, so we have and here we go to the conflict with humans like brown bears they are in mountains wolves they are in mountains but also herbivores like deer or uh, wild boars uh, they are in mountains where there's no people they are safe and then they may move to the lowlands and create some problems to humans but uh, but um, but this is thanks to this is partly thanks to to to, to climate and land use change of course um yeah I th so 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 i think that that uh since since mountains are let's say uh what we call social ecological systems it's not it's not a, a natural community mountains it's a region that includes everything so everything is super connected and 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 climate change will affect to all the, the 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 components of this of this system uh that will affect humans in many different ways and probably and faster and uh, within a region probably faster than than in the surrounding areas well it's very difficult to, to to make generalizations here but we know that the increase of temperature is higher in the mountains due to the uh, climatic compression or whatever this is higher in in the mountains than, than in the lowlands I think that we as individuals uh, have the potential to do things um, and we must do things but also I think that uh, we will fail if we don't have the uh, cooperation of our governments that need to take brave uh, actions let's say and maybe they are not very nice for the society but they need to move uh, fast they need to make decisions fast um, so <coughs> in, ter in terms of individual actions well, this is not only for mountains of course this is for cl climate change is, is everywhere so but i would say that um so typical things like less private transport uh, probably local food well not only local but low carbon footprint food local if it's local better um probably for the scientists, uh, people will fly less, or at least try not to fly uh, many transoceanic uh, flights, which uh, have a huge carbon footprint, of course. Uh, it, less meat, probably, it's also a good solution. Uh, but and 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 think and then vote um, for parties that, uh, at least theoretically, um, take this into account. Uh, but again, I mean, this is this is a this needs a multi-actor let's see approach so if it i think um in in the in the state of emergency that we are now it's not i mean if we if it's only the individuals it's gonna be too slow for sure it's 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 what makes things uh stronger uh but uh but if models are true are correct uh we need the cooperation of of our governments of course here we we live in a country where where uh, uh, maritime transport is very important, and we know that uh, pollution from from the from the harbors is huge. Uh, this has to be, but this has to be from the governments. Uh, maybe taxes uh, have to be implemented, so the, which are not very well received by the society, but probably it's, uh, these kind of actions that need to be uh, taken into account. I don't know. And, and in terms of adaptation, again, this needs uh, the uh, cooperation of the governments because so it's clear that the, the society needs to adapt both um, both the locals and the and the visitors. Let's say the locals need to adapt to a new environment that's changing a lot, and 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 in many areas they are, and especially in our country, uh, in mountains they are used. So while well, much of the income comes from tourism, in most areas so uh so they need to to adapt to diversify the 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 offer but also 
I think that the visitors uh, need to change the demands on, on mountain regions. Now, I, I so to say it very simply, we, we are in a society where uh, demand uh, forces supplies, let's say. And, um, and if we ask for, and if the people that live in the cities who want, let's say, put the typical example, I want to ski, I want to ski, I want to ski, and want to ski, whichever the price, of course, they will offer us a ski resorts, whichever the price. And that means lots of use of water, energy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe uh, we as visitors, as users of the services, we should say, okay, this is not possible. Let's change our demands. But this is not the way it's done now. This is kind of kind of changing paradigm. So on one hand, I think the locals have to adapt. Uh, they have to diversify. They have to... Mountains have a nice thing is that they, they're, I think, um, they, they are enough small mountain regions i mean and the, and the locals they are um let's say small enough to try to find new ways of social organization more cooperativism etc um and they can be not self-sustainable because it's impossible but they they can try to 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 build a society uh based on a different uh paradigm i think this is possible uh, this is for the locals, uh, and even if they offer the services that we ask for, because most of the people live in the coasts, uh, they can change a little bit their their organization and and the social organization and the economic organization of of these of these areas. And then we as users, so the people that live in the cities that use, in a way, the mountains, we have to be aware that mountains are changing, and the things that we were used to take from the mountains maybe are not that available and they may be too costly. So, so we also have to make an effort, and this may be a huge effort, uh, to uh, understand uh, the challenges that these regions are facing. And, and for them, it's, mo it's, it's more difficult than for the people that live in the cities, because most of the decisions are taken in the big cities. Even decisions for the mountains, they are taken in the big cities. And, um, and so for us, Things are so mountains are this place where we take things from, right? And it shouldn't be like that. I mean, um, in a more decentralized uh, society, uh, this could this could change. And adaptation has to again adaptation has to go has to be done in a multi-actor approach or strategy. And uh, for example, I think now that with this pandemic, we have learned that working from from home is possible, right? Uh, this is also an opportunity for people to stay or to go and live in uh, remote areas like mountains. Uh, but tourism, tourism in tourism or, or, or yeah, the demand of services must must adapt because mountains are not the same. Even even during our lifespan, we have seen that mountains are changing a lot. Mountain regions are changing a lot. Well, I think that uh, mountains, uh, since well, I mentioned before that they are they are what we call a socio-ecological system, and they they have they include almost anything that you can imagine. You can work uh, for the mountains, being a, a, an IT guy or a farmer or a, an ecologist or a, an economist or a social scientist. There's there's places where you can you can uh, find your place um, to make our society better. Um, also, because you will have to uh, uh, to collaborate with many different people because in mountains things are very close, right? As as these systems and 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 development sustainable development sustainable development is not possible without the collaboration between the different uh, sectors. And this is something that we are, I mean, in our uh, generation, we are learning that uh, if you really want to have an impact on the on the society, uh, if you want your results to be applied to the society, you cannot, let's say, make a joke, stay on studying one leaf of a tree. Right, you have to collaborate with uh, with people that are not from your fields, uh, and this this is the only way to 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 make things work. I mean, if you want your results to have a, a, a real impact uh, 
uh, and now it, I have to say, uh, let's say at the short term, right, uh, into the society. And mountains, on one hand, they need this because the, the challenges are huge and they offer this. So, so I think it's it's a very good place to work in. I mean, they are also nice places to live in, of course. But uh, but uh, whichever your your uh, your passion, I think you can you can you can work in the mountains on this. You see, I'm I'm an ecologist, but I'm passionate about the social structure of mountains. I'm very worried about the loss of the cultural heritage of mountains. Uh, I, I'm I'm looking on ways how 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 energy uh, can be developed um, sustainably in a, in a sustainable way, but not having a huge impact because we cannot put wind mills everywhere. Let's say um, so. I found myself as an ecologist, like studying plants and animals, um, having to and, and and enjoying a lot uh, collaborate with uh, with people that are not at all in my in my field right and this is and this is um personally you learn a lot um but then you you see that that this is the only uh way 